Hey and welcome to my first tutorial for the Dynasty Empire. My name is Michael Kinsey, one of the Dynasty's new partners, and in this tutorial we're going to be using Blender to make this quick semi-procedural edge crack effect. So if you can see here, I have this empty that controls the, uh, the position of the effect, and I can also control the scale, and just change how the effect looks on the mesh. It's just a simple low poly mesh that I'm doing this to. And then on top of that, the best thing about this is that it retains the mesh's UVs and allows you to split the uh, the edge crack effect off into a separate material, which makes UVing it and controlling it much easier. So to break down this effect, it is still very early days for this kind of thing in Blender. Uh, we will have everything nodes coming soon, so this is very uh, kind of temporary. It's it's good if you know that you have the asset how you want it and you want to dial it in. I wouldn't recommend getting too complacent with this effect, otherwise you can cause a lot of problems with your mesh. But let's go through and start breaking it down. Like I showed you before, it's just a very simple mesh that I've modeled here. And then what I actually have hidden is a simple boolean mesh that I'm using to generate the effect. And the boolean mesh, if I go into edit mode and then hide everything else, you can see it's just a bunch of lines. If I can hide all the uh, displacement effects and everything. Yeah. Give me a second. <laughs> Displace. That's correct. Anyway, you can see that it's a bunch of lines and just vertices here that are the outer edges. And you can do this to any mesh by if I unhide everything and then just solo this. Uh, if I duplicate this on the Y here, let's view this. If you ever want to just grab the edges and delete everything else, you can just go select by sharp edges and then uh, control I to select all the other edges, delete edges. And then you pretty much have exactly what you need to get this effect going. I tried many ways using like the, uh, the uh, certain modifiers like the wireframe and the skin modifier, which is the one that I ended up going with to make this fully procedural. That's why I said semi-procedural. Uh, however, with the inability to control the edges properly and how the effect works, I didn't manage to get that to work. So if anyone has any ideas, you can uh, use those around with those. I'd love to see what you do. Uh, but let's keep going through this. So if I now want to only have the edges at all, I can just go and de uh, dissolve, well, delete only faces. And then also what I did is, since I want the cracking to only take place on the outside edges, not any inset edges like these ones here, I just went through and I just quickly selected all of those edges, like the ones here. And that seems all of them. Yep. And then I deleted those edges too. Uh, this one too. There you go. That's essentially how you generate the mesh that I used to create the boolean here that then subtracts from the edges of the mesh. So now let's click that mesh and start working our way through the modifier stack. So there we go. Now we're back again with the base mesh that I pretty much just showed you. Very simple. Uh, and then the first thing I did to it is I added a little displace modifier here. And that just allowed me to control uh, how strong the effect will be on the edges. And then I added a skin modifier in order, since I'm booleaning the edges out from the underlying mesh. Uh, this allowed me to actually make geometry out of the wireframe that I showed before. And then I subdivided it so it was a lot smoother, which it makes it better for displacing. You can see that it's actually quite a nice kind of like roll cage effect here if you ever needed to make a roll cage for a vehicle. I've used this many times. Uh, let's move on to the next effect. So subdivide. And then I displace it again. And this displace directly controls the uh, the thickness of the, the mesh. And you, you can see you have to be careful with it because you can get a little bit crazy. And then I added a displace, and this is how you get the cracking effect. And for the displace, I added a texture to the displace. Uh, if we go view the texture now, I've just added a simple Veroni or Veronoi, however you want to say it, material. And then that's how we get the, you can see it pulling out behind the mesh here. 
And that's how we get the random edge chipping effect. So now we go back to the modifiers. Let's collapse everything that I've gone through already. So displace, skin, subdivide for smooth, displace again to control the width, and then a second displace for the uh, uh, the effect to break everything up. And then lastly, after that displace, I have a decimate modifier to really bring the poly count down. And now you can see the edge chips are showing up again because everything's low poly enough. And this also allows you to procedurally uh, control the the amount of polygons that will be cutting away uh, to directly control poly count. So if I hide that and I now show the wireframe, you can see it's automatically triangulating the mesh that I have. It's splitting. It's keeping the UVs that I've already generated for this mesh, which are very simple. I've just got seams and all the sharp edges. And then also, it's doing me a big favor by the fact that I have this mesh here. So if I actually show the mesh, let's go here and then go to uh, visibility, no viewport visibility, viewport display, and let's set this as solid. You can see that this is just marked as uh, sharp. So if you right click, mark uh, shape flat, because when you boolean something in Blender, the uh, the boolean object and the object you're booleaning into uh, it'll copy the uh, vertex sum of data of whatever the boolean object is and add that to the mesh that you're booleaning, booleaning into. So now if I hide this, you can see that we're getting the effect. And the way that I'm getting this empty to control the scale and the uh, offset of the where is in the displace modifier of this boolean object that we create over here, displace2. Uh, I have the texture coordinate set to an object and then I told the object to be this empty and then that way wherever I move this empty you can see that it's updating and uh, uh, moving the origin of where the noise is in the world and that way it moves where it displaces the mesh and then that helps you control the offset and again the uh, the scale of the uh, the mesh, the noise that displaces the mesh, sorry. And then something that might throw a few people off if you're trying to do this workflow is when you get to the skin uh, by adding a skin modifier, since it's been created from the mesh here, uh, it might be very large, which won't be great at all. Uh, so if you, if you add a skin modifier and the geometry is huge, you can just hit Control A and then use your mouse and that will control the strength of the uh, well, the, the width of the geometry that you create. And then again, you can use this to essentially in edit mode, control the effect of the booleaning. As you can see, it's actually booleaning this from the mesh and updating it live. As you can see, it triangulating underneath. So it's turn all these back on and you should see everything go back to how it was. And then if I hide that, you can now see, and then show uh, hide the wireframe. Now we have that effect back. And then in order to set up the materials, oh, uh, let's just go over the modifiers of this quick. I've got nothing complex. I've just added a Boolean modifier and I've set it to this object here to take this object away from this mesh. So I've set it to difference, uh, to the Boolean mod uh, object. And then in order to retain the normals, I've just thrown a quick weighted normals modifier on that. And then to uh, automatically triangulate the mesh, I've just thrown a triangulate modifier, which also helps reduce any errors that can occur from the Boolean, in give, uh, the Boolean giving bad uh, geometry after, uh, since it's all very rough geometry here. And then uh, for the materials, I've just got two materials on this mesh, just a checkered material and a red material. And as you saw before, the uh, Boolean object is set to the red material. And since this already has the object that I'm Booleaning into, already has the red and the checkered material, it will match the two. And then we get this effect. And now if you ever need to, you can just duplicate the object. You can uh, get it to a point where you're happy with the mesh. Uh, and then let's find the object that I just made. Uh, let's apply the visual geometry. I'll move this on the way. 
And now you can see that we actually have a mesh that can be brought into game and have different uh, different materials applied to it, like a broken concrete on the red material, uh, which is easy to unwrap now. So if I go to UV editing, and then I go to the materials on the mesh, I can just select the, uh, I'm going to edit mode on the mesh. Why can't I see? Uh, why can't I go into edit mode? Do I not have it selected? There you go. Wrong, wrong mesh. That's why. This mesh. I'm going to edit mode on the mesh and then select the red material and then unwrap it. And now we have the uh, edgeware automatically unwrapped. So if you just want to apply a tileable to this, set it to the correct dex uh, texel density. And it's super rough. Again, uh, Blender is great with its modifier stack, but it's it's not Houdini, not yet at least. So it it has a long way to go for procedural effects like this, but this is the first time that I've tried something like this and I, I feel it works really well. All right, so that was my quick tutorial for the Blender Edgeware demo. You can see here, sometimes the Boolean does break, but don't worry about that. You can just tweak it a little bit and uh, the mesh should go back to normal. Uh, if you guys like this, give it a thumbs up and I guess I'll see you in the next video. So have a good day.